What's good? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. And we know there's a whole bunch of new iPhone 12 leak details, promotion coming, and all new camera details, plus new 2020 Apple TV leaks, and then the AirPods Pro getting noise canceling fixed, maybe? But before we get started, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of classes in design, business, technology, and more. A premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their fields so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work that you love. Now, two of the classes that I've enjoyed were Going Freelance, which is exactly what I'm doing now, and DIY Cinematography that just helps show me ways to improve the quality of my videos. The quality of content and learning on here is really legit stuff from true experts in their field. So Skillshare's annual subscription is less than $10 a month and more affordable than other learning platforms. But you can go to this link on screen to get a free two month trial. I think you're gonna really enjoy it. So check out Skillshare, tomorrow is for the taking. All right, let's get into it. And we have to start with more big time leaks of the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro details thanks to Max Weinbeck, Everything Apple Pro, and John Prosser. And if you've been hoping that Apple will finally bring that buttery smooth ProMotion 120 hertz refresh rate, well, their latest report says it is coming to the new iPhone 12 Pro model. Now again, there are four new models of the iPhone 12 that we expect to see. And then according to Everything Apple Pro, the ProMotion 120 hertz screen refresh rate will be coming to the higher end 6.1 inch and 6.7 inch iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max, if that's what they're called. Now the 5.4 and lower end 6.1 inch iPhone 12 models, they'll stick with a 60 hertz refresh rate. And these aren't the first devices to get it. We know that the iPad Pro, that was the first Apple device to get the souped up display. But let's go back to 2017 and just show some love when the Razer phone was the first to bring 120 hertz to the market and it was silky smooth then and it still is now. But honestly, you know that Apple's gonna hype it up. They're gonna say something like, it's never been done before on an iPhone. Now, according to the video, Apple is working on a dynamic variable refresh rate to help with battery life. So we've seen other phones like the S20 lineup give users the option to specifically select the 120 Hertz refresh rate, but it affects battery life negatively. The idea here is that depending on what you're doing, the display will change accordingly. So if you're watching a cinematic movie, you don't need 120 Hertz, but if you're gaming like playing Fortnite, you'll probably want the higher refresh rate and Fortnite supports 120 Hertz on the iPad Pro right now. Apple's also planning to pack a larger battery into the new 12 Pro series to support this with a 4,400 milliampere hour battery. That's up from roughly the 3,000 on the 11 Pro and 3,900 on the 11 Pro Max. John Prosser, the big time Apple scooper duper now has confirmed that the new flagship color for the 12 Pro and Pro Max will indeed be midnight blue. It'll replace the midnight green and the booty side of the phones will keep the frosted glass backing with wireless charging. Now, the glass they'll be using is even more durable and the new flat design will bring the glass edges closer into the body and not on the edges to help protect it better. But also the camera, we all care about it because our phones are our cameras. Well, it'll be getting a whole lot of improvements, but it's still a work in progress. The report says the camera lens will likely stay at 12 megapixels, but they did test 64 megapixel lenses that didn't perform as well with the improvements and features they're looking to implement. Apple will be bringing a 3X optical zoom, a first for the iPhone, but still trailing significantly compared to other phone cameras. Apple's also looking at somewhere between a 25 to 30 times digital zoom. That still trails again others that are hitting somewhere between 50 to 100 times digital zoom, whether people use it or not. Now, night mode will be finally coming to the telephoto lens when you zoom in. Autofocus has been improved to be two to three times faster thanks to the new LiDAR sensor that will instantly give it more depth information. Portrait mode, that's gonna get even better, but Apple could also be bringing portrait mode video. It's still in development right now and similar to what Samsung already has with their bokeh video from what, two years ago? We also have low light iPhone photos. This is gonna be a priority. They're gonna get better noise reduction, be able to detect subjects even better and we'll get improved image stabilization. Plus, you'll be able to get better slow motion videos in low light conditions as well. And you know that you wanna see everything you can because no one wants a pick. So we're expecting big improvements across the board coming to the camera for the iPhone 12 series. Now, according to the report, 
the camera is really what's holding up the final prototyping so Apple can get it right. And you can check out my previous video that detailed all the pricing leaks for the 2020 iPhone lineup with the 5.4 inch model potentially starting at $649. Now, we are learning more than we ever have before about the new iPhones and all of these improvements, they're gonna add up to a significant upgrade if you're willing to pay for it. But Apple doesn't plan to really let go of its reputation as one of the best phone cameras you know, they're really focusing on low light performance and you can tell they don't mind trailing with optical zoom or higher megapixels compared to the competition if this is all accurate because we know that Apple, they have a way of marketing and angling things. Like, could you imagine everyone just talking about the smoothest display ever and the best low light ever and not talking about megapixels and not talking about zoom? I, I you could see that happening, but again, None of this has been officially confirmed, but it's gonna be hard to surprise us with the iPhone 12 lineup now with all these detailed leaks this early in May. All right, let's get some Apple TV leaks and talk about its new remote as well. According to John Prosser, the new Apple TV 4K is ready to ship with a new A12X processor and will have either 64 gig or 128 gig storage capacities. The current Apple TV 4K has an A10X Fusion processor with 32 gig and 64 gig options. He says that it could drop any time, maybe even by the time you watch this, but 9to5Mac reported way earlier that we could also see a new Apple TV remote from their discoveries inside of iOS 14 code. Now, Twitter user Mr. White, who's been known to throw out accurate leaks, posted these images of what could be that new remote. This time it's bringing white buttons, but if this is the new remote, it looks to be exactly the same as the current one. And I'm sorry, nobody wants that because it's one of the most frustrating remotes that I have ever used for any type of scrolling, selecting app icons, entering in letters. Come on guys, like pretty much everything you do with that remote sucks, but we'll wait and see if we get a new Apple TV before WWDC or after. All right, you all know the 13 inch MacBook Pro, it's out. Custom to build models are taking longer to arrive and I'm waiting to receive one to get my review done. You saw my first reaction video and this is all about the new Magic Keyboard plus other subtle upgrades. But according to Geekbench benchmarks, let's say you wanna compare the entry level 1299, 1.4 gigahertz quad core, eighth gen Intel Core i5 model to the next kind of big step up at 1799. That's for the 2.0 gigahertz quad core, 10th gen Intel Core i5. The performance gains are about 16%. Not big, not small, but a little bit of a bump. And it's a little boost, but if you bump up the processor, let's say to its highest level, go for the 32 gigs of RAM and four terabytes of storage option, just max it all out. You're talking about a $3,599 machine. Sheesh. Now people were hoping that we'd start seeing mini LED display products with Apple this year. They've been rumored, but we didn't see it with the iPad Pro, uh, we didn't see it with the MacBook Pro yet, but reporter Ming-Chi Kuo claims that Apple's mini LED roadmap may have been pushed back to 2021 because of the coronavirus. Now he reported initially that Apple had planned to release a high-end 12.9 inch iPad Pro this year with mini LED and an A14X chip, but we know that didn't happen. Plus an updated 16 inch MacBook Pro with a new display tech and even the long rumored 14.1 inch MacBook Pro. Now, none of those have happened, but mini LED tech will bring thinner and lighter designs with the deeper blacks, a wider color gamut, and then high contrast and dynamic range. So we didn't see it in the MacBook Pro 13. That's not the only product though that came out recently. I had to show you this fun kind of x-ray view of the Magic Keyboard thanks to iFixit. It just looks super cool. They haven't torn it apart yet, but you can see in this x-ray the new scissor switch keys. Also, the trackpad looks to have kind of multiple buttons underneath it to make sure that it captures any presses on its surface. It's like looking inside. Now, iFixit claims there's more happening with the Magic Keyboard compared to many laptops, if that makes you feel any better for paying $299 for it, but it's a real nice experience and just a transformative product for the iPad Pro if that's what you're looking for. Plus, some Magic Keyboard updates that might you might like are really more iPad Pro stuff. Microsoft Word and PowerPoint for iPad now support split view so you can use two documents next to each other. Is this a big deal? I mean, depending on who you are, I think it kind of is because it's only gonna make you more productive. Now, Microsoft is reportedly working on bringing support for the new trackpad controls in iPad OS 13.4. You're gonna get basic trackpad functionality right now. Also, we know this, Apple confirmed WWDC. It'll be held on June the 22nd. It'll be all digital. 
We still don't know exactly what to expect since there are no details yet, but it will happen a few weeks later than compared to its normal early June timing. We might see some hardware, but look, I'm personally excited to see what iPad OS brings. Now that they have this new magic hardware, like what is the next step they're gonna take with this software? I hope to see it this year. Plus, watch OS, this bad boy, it still has so much room to grow and just do even more things. I just can't wait to see what we get there. And it's no coincidence that the two OSs that I mentioned are running on the two most exciting pieces of hardware that Apple has right now for me. I wanna know what do you wanna see at WWDC? It could be hardware or software. Maybe they bring out their AirTags platform. You know where to put it all in the comments and maybe a, an over under of how many times they say dub dub. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, Apple recently released new firmware for the AirPods Pro. I was one of those people that brought up that it sounded like the noise canceling got worse when I was traveling in planes. I'm not anymore, but it turned out that I wasn't just being paranoid. The new firmware 2D15 now has given a mixed bag of responses that maybe was supposed to fix it or not. But if you experience your noise canceling getting better, I wanna know about it because it seems like Apple has never gotten back to where it was before, at least for me. Now, before we go, I know a lot of you, you're staying at home, right? You're not traveling, you're sheltering in place and you're looking for more things to do or more things to watch. Well, I'd like to give a shout out to my man, Dylan Cracknell out in San Mateo for watching my videos and looking like he actually cares. That's a good apple. Yeah! Unless you're forced to sit there and watch because your dad told you to. All right, if you guys and gals have any picks, Apple Bits Nation, I wanna see them. You, your kids, your pets watching the show, send them to applebitsshow at gmail.com and I will show you all back that love that you give to me at the end of the show. You make a little cameo on here. And please, no picks. See, that's twice I had to bring that up in this video just to make sure. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Remember to go to this link to get two free months of online classes from legit experts in their fields. And if you like this video, you know what to do. Give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell, ding, to get all my videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast where we just do this deep dive into these stories and more with special guests. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take care and be safe, and we'll talk to you soon. Peace. And please, no dark pics. See, that's twice I had to bring that up in this video just to make sure.